Hi, in this video, we're going to learn how we can add text labels to our screen. Let's go. The write function is a new command that allows us to add labels to the screen. We simply insert the text we want to write as a parameter in our function. We can print strings or integers to our screen this way. So if we called this function with the text hello world, we would see that label appear at Tracy's location on the screen. It does look pretty small though, so let's look at a way we can change the size. Adding the font parameter will allow us to change both the size and style of the font used to create the label. We need to include this information inside a set of parentheses, where each item is separated by a comma. The type of font or font name comes first. This name is written inside quotation marks. A few examples you can use are Arial, Times New Roman, and Futura. The size of the font comes second and is written as an integer value that notes the size of the font in pixels. When we add the font attribute with a font name of Futura and a size of 20, we see that the font is larger and has changed in style. The third attribute we can use when we use our write function is a line. This will determine where the text will be drawn in relation to Tracy's position. The options we can use here are center, left, or right, all written inside quotation marks. An important thing to note is that the attributes of font and a line are optional and can be called in any order inside our write function. Though we need to add the text to print as the first parameter, we can choose to add whichever additional parameters we'd like and can place them in either order. When we add the align attribute to our write function and set the location to center, we can see that the text is centered above Tracy's location. We can use variables to print a label, the same way we use variables in other parts of our programs. We can just call the variable name where the text should be included in the write function, and the value saved in that variable will be printed. If we want to add strings together, say in this case where we want to create a greeting depending on the name saved inside a variable, we use something called concatenation. To concatenate strings, we place a plus sign between the different items and they will all be pieced together to form our final string, in this case, hello Tracy. Note that we need to include a space after the string hello. If we do not, there will be no space between our string hello and our string Tracy. Also, remember, if we want to use the value of the variable, we do not include quotation marks around the variable name. What if we wanted to concatenate a string and a number? Well, when we try to do this the same way we concatenated strings, we get an error that tells us that we cannot concatenate stir and int objects. Think back to when we tried to perform mathematical functions on values input by a user. We needed to use the int keyword around the variable to change its value to an integer type. We can do the same thing here to fix this error. If we surround the variable name that contains an integer value with the keyword stir, it will change the type of the variable to a string, which can then be concatenated with another string, and we'll see the output we were expecting. Let's take a look at an example in the editor. In this example, we want to add labels to the concentric circles program we wrote previously that note the radius values of each circle drawn. Let's take a look at how this can be done. Here we have our concentric circles program. When we run it, it asks the user for input and then draws three circles based on the sizes that the user entered. Now what we want to do is add a label beneath each circle to say what the radius of each circle is. So inside my draw circle function, after the circle is drawn, I would like to have Tracy write the radius value. So I can just use this radius number that is set in as my um, argument to my function to write that number. And let's say that we want it to be right above where Tracy is. So we're going to align it at center. Let's just see what happens if we add this one line of code. Now Tracy is writing the number at the bottom of each circle. So that's a good start. Now I want 
the number to be located below the circle. So I'm actually going to set Tracy's position before she writes that number. And I want it to be centered at zero in the X. And I want it to be um, a little bit below the radius of the circle. So in order to get um, down a radius, I'm going to use negative radius, which is going to go down the radius value. And if I use just negative radius, it probably will write my circle, my label right on the circle. So I'm going to go just 10 pixels below that. So I'm going down the radius of my circle and then 10 pixels below that so that the value is written a little bit below my circle. Let's see how this works. Perfect. Now the location of my label is perfect, but I want to give a little bit more information to the user. I want to let them know that this value is a radius because they might think that it's a diameter or circumference, something like that. So we want to add a label that says this is the radius. So if I just take a string that says radius and add it, concatenate it with my radius value, let's see what happens. Now, when we get to the line 17 where I'm writing those, I'm getting an error that says I can't concatenate these two types of variables. So all I need to do is remember that radius, my number, is an integer. And I can't concatenate a string with an integer. I can do it once I change it over to a string type, though. So let's see now how this works. Awesome, now I have a label that tells exactly what that numerical value is measuring, and it's exactly in the position that I want. In this lesson, we learned how to use the write function to add text to the screen. Now it's your turn to use this function in some Tracy programs of your own.